Well, hi everyone. This is Sony Artisan of Imagery and Singray Ambassador Don Smith. And today I would like to take a look at a brand new feature in the brand new Adobe Photoshop 22.0.0. For those of you on the cloud, you probably just got this. I've been actually traveling, so I'm not sure exactly when this came out. But what I want to take a look at today is Adobe actually added us or gave us a sky replacement filter, which is something typically that's been handled by third party companies and especially a good one that I want to compare it with today is Luminar 4. But before we get into this, let me just give you the background of this picture. My wife, Barry and I uh, returned about a week or so ago from a trip up to the Olympic Peninsula in uh, the Pacific Northwest. And if you've never been up there, it's absolutely beautiful. We spent time out along the coast. This is a scene from a beach called Ruby Beach. Now, um, believe it or not, when I captured this scene, there was a person stand, a couple of people standing over here to the right that I've cloned out. And it was dumping rain here. This was pouring down rain. I'm holding an umbrella over my a7R4 on a tripod, framing this up. And I, uh, this is basically the raw shot with a few tweaks for contrast, and that's it. So what I want to do is I want to come in and compare the new sky replacement filter in Photoshop. And I'm kind of new at this. I'm finding it a little clunky. And then we're going to go in with the same shot and see how the sky replacement filter in Luminar 4 uh, handles the same thing. So to uh, access the sky replacement filter in the new version of Photoshop, you'll come under edit, come down here to sky replacement, and this box comes up. Now, the first thing um, I noticed is that if you accidentally hit OK, the box goes away, then you're going to have to repeat your process. Go to edit sky replacement is the only way I'm finding to bring the box back up. Maybe there is another way. I, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, that's what I've had to do. So first off, they're going to give you, like any other program, a couple of sky replacement filters. This is actually one that they've given me, and I wanted to get kind of a sunset feel. But I think to hold this test valid, uh, I went ahead and I actually loaded in um, my own sky, which is, let me go there, this guy. And the way you would do it is come down to this plus and you would open up and I grabbed this one. I have a folder full of sky photos and it brings it into the mix. So you can actually bring in and import all your own skies, which is, is really cool. And then you can actually, if you, if you don't want them, I think I've actually imported this twice. I could uh, click on this one um, and hit delete. And oops, that's not one I want to. Let me, let me make sure it's highlighted. Well, uh, there, there we go. We don't know if it's highlighted or not. And there goes the whole box. Okay, so uh, something right off the bat I'm really not wild about. I'm going to drag that layer in the trash. Let's go back to the sky replacement. Anyway, this is my sky replacement that I want to use um, because I can go in and use the same one when we do uh, the example in Luminar. So uh, the first thing, I actually want to jump over these and I'll come back to them. Uh, I want to come down into here. You get two choices of lighting modes, multiplier screen. And really what I'm finding out about that is it's how the sky itself interacts with the trees in the background or whatever it is it's trying to blend in the background. This is a tough shot because we've got trees with limbs and, and uh, rocks. So this is one of the reasons I kind of went with this shot. So multiply tends to work really well. The uh, Let's hover over these each one of these nodes here. And for lighting adjustment, this is controlling the opacity of the lighting adjustment uh, with the foreground. So I'm going to kind of tug on this and just really kind of see what happens. And I'm not seeing a whole lot that's happening in this particular picture. Let's go the other way. You can see now I'm getting some gaps back in here on these trees. So I'm just going to 
bring this back up visually to where these gaps start closing back in. And I think what they're talking about in this slider is the foreground of what it's trying to blend. So this is what Luminar would kind of call gap control for those of you that have used Luminar. All right, color adjustment. Uh, you would think would be the color adjustment of the sky, but it's not. This is controlling the opacity. Let's hover over that again of actually the color that's going to go into the foreground of color harmonizing applied to the foreground. They call it color harmonizing. Let's just pull this all the way over and see what happens. OK, so it kind of gave it a reddish, uh, reddish look, not something I'm really wild about. That's more neutral. You can see it just stripped all the color out. So they're trying. I think what they're trying to say here is if there's color in the sky, there's going to be a little bit of that reflected down maybe into the water. So maybe about right there. That, that doesn't look bad. Uh, they do give you a flip command. I'm not going to do that. Um, that's just if you want to flip this slide over. But I don't want to do this. This was actually a sunset. And I'm kind of looking out to the west here at Ruby Beach. But again, remember, it is a rainy day. This is scale. So simply tugging up will uh, bring it up. And tugging down will bring, bring it down. OK, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit more. All right, somewhere about right in there. Now, here's how we control the temperature on the sky itself. It's just a temperature slider. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set this back to zero. And then um, a brightness. So we can brighten that sky if we wanted to. Um, or we can tone it down. It makes it really look, in my opinion, kind of muddy on this one when you tone it down. Now, these two, let's come up to Shift Edge and expand or contract the sky and the foreground boundary, which I thought I was doing down here in lighting adjustment. Well, let's just go and pull this all the way up. Oh, yeah, you can see that now the sky is bleeding over um, those trees. Left sh let's go backwards. Yeah, it's lifted it off of there. So you can kind of fine tune it. All right, that, that's pretty cool. Um, maybe right about in here. And then Fade Edge, let's hover over this and see what it's giving us. Soften the sky and the foreground um, boundary. So that's up at 100. Let's take it the other direction. Yeah, you can see that's very harsh. So you can just kind of play with this to get any gaps in these trees filled in. And um, they do have this little brush. I haven't played with it yet, where I can actually kind of expand uh, the area of the sky if I had it reduced more. Uh, this will just let you obviously zoom in. And um, this is just letting me move the picture around with the hand tool. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, if I went ahead now and clicked OK, you would say you would see over here on my layers palette, it's going to put it all in a sky replacement group with all the layers that you could go back in and, and tweak later. And I'm sure you could save that out as a smart object also and come back in and replace it. So that's the new Photoshop very quickly sky replacement. I'm going to drag that off and we're going to go in now. Let me let me reduce this picture back down. OK, now let's go ahead and open this same photo into Luminar 4 and we'll go ahead and try the Luminar 4 sky replacement. We'll give it just a moment to open here. I'm not going to apply any of the Luminar looks, the presets down on the bottom because I want to uh, do a fair comparison here. So to get into the sky replacement, you would come over here to, excuse me, to the creative module, and you would come up here to AI sky replacement. I know a lot of you have done this. I'm not going to go with any of their presets. I'm going to come all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to load up that same sky, which was sunset number eight. And we're going to place that one in there. There we go. I think right off the bat, it's, it's looking a little bit better 
Um, let me see. I'm going to raise this up a little bit, the horizon blending. And what's... Yeah, right. I'm looking back in those trees again. Right about in there looks pretty good. The horizontal positioning, I want to see if we can get it a little closer to what we had. And I think that was more the part of the sky we had in Photoshop. Okay, there's really nothing I need to do on the global. I'm going to tug it on a little bit. We'll go into our advanced setting. I don't see where we're having any gap issues up here, nor back here. So we're all good there. Uh, there's really no defocusing I need to do on the sky because it's nice and soft. Now, let's come in to... Um, uh, up, go back up here, excuse me, under horizontal position to relight the scene. This is going to be Luminar's way of, of taking a look at that foreground. I'm going to take any of the light out and there that's kind of a neutral uh, foreground and I could go way over the top here, which I'm not. So right about in there and um, here's your sky temperature. We really don't, we can warm it up. Um, a little bit more. We can cool it off a little bit. That's all to taste. And again, just like similar in Photoshop, you have your exposure. I'm going to lighten that sky just a little bit. And the beauty of being in here, you can see there was no sluggishness when I grabbed on any of the sliders in Luminar 4. Everything was just instant. It worked. Um, as opposed to why Photoshop was just uh, giving me the spinning wheel and not working immediately. Uh, I could go ahead and finish this shot out, which I think I will, and I'll post it. And here's my take before I we wrap this up. If I'm ever going to composite a sky, and again, look at this and tell me you, you don't think this was done on a on a full rainy day. The rain was almost going horizontal when I clicked this. But um, we turned it into, uh, you know, a sunset. Let, let me do one other thing here while I'm in here. I want to just go back in here to AI Enhance. And let's just see if we tug on that. Look at that. Look at what it'll do to that image. Just to kind of finish it off. I don't even know to, need to go to Sky Enhancement. I think that's too over the top. Um, and there you have it, really. Um, you know, I could go back into, let's just go back into now sky replacement and relight scene. Try that out a little bit. Now I'm throwing a little bit of warmth in that foreground. So you can play with your heart's content. I just think, again, these third party products, be it Topaz, Luminar, On One, it's not sluggish. These products. Are designed to work. I don't know why when Photoshop can come out with something, it's power hungry and, and it chug, chugs along. Um, it shouldn't be that way. So if I'm going to replace a sky uh, as a professional, I am definitely going to note it and I'm going to say this sky was not there. I've replaced this sky. You guys, you can do what you want. I, I'm not here to criticize one way or the other on how you should handle it. But uh, definitely, if I was to put a picture out like this, I would say this was a composite scene and um, let the viewer know that I'm just having a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Um, if you are on Creative Cloud, there's a, a couple other new filters they've given you in there that I have not had a chance to play with. I thought this would be fun to take a look at. And... Um, so I hope this has helped you out. Uh, I hope you get in and play with this stuff and you guys have a great time. It's all about creating anyway, isn't it? And until next time, this is Don Smith. You take care.